Hi. Um, I, last night, I say I, it was actually my headmate, um, stumbled upon this, this tweet and I wanted to talk about it because it was, it was actually a, a kind of a weird moment because it was weirdly relevant to something that was going on with me at the time. Um, so f- selfishly, I decided to make it everyone else's problem. I want to specify before we go into this, the person that made this tweet is not what this is about. We are not even going to look at this, this person at all. Um, I, I don't want anyone harassing them. I don't want anyone commenting on this tweet. I don't want anyone doing anything. Um, this is just entirely like, I kind of wanted to use this as like a, a, a jumping off point for like a larger thing. So let's take a look at it. I'm sure, I'm sure some of you are going to, to jump in. We saw this last night. By we, I mean Ceres. We're going to read it. If you have an eating disorder specifically concerned with being skinny or not being fat, please stop pretending you're not fat phobic, thanks. And then followed by, and that's okay, baby. It's not your fault. You're just in denial. And then followed further by, quote, I don't care if other people are fat, it's just me. Wrong. X. No. That's the, that's the, the substantive argument that we're going to be responding to. There are a couple of other um, replies in here that I do want to like take a look at. Um, but this is, this is the, the initial tweet. Um, why are we talking about this? Why am I like targeting this person specifically? I'm not, like I said, we're not addressing this person. This is not about them. It's specifically about this mindset and about this like argument. Um, because I think this fucking sucks. And at least based on what I'm seeing in chat, um, you all kind of know why this fucking sucks, but I'm going to explain it anyway, because I think that there's just enough people here in this little space of the online left that um, kind of inhabit this uh, this mindset that I think I need to explain it. And it's really fucking frustrating. So let, let's let's start here at the beginning. Um, we're going to reread the tweet. We're going to kind of break this down. If you have an eating disorder specifically concerned with being skinny or not being fat, Please stop pretending you're not fat phobic thing. Yeah, 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 literal Laura, a very progressive keyboard touching take. It is um, a really, really, really bad argument. I want to, before I like go into this, I kind of want to, to touch on the argument that this person is failing at making. Because the reason why this argument is being, f- is like being uh, made is good. The, the, problem is is that they are failing at making the argument and the reason they're failing at it is because uh the argument they're failing at making is more nuanced than they actually want to convey and that i think the people who hold this mindset typically want uh to convey so the argument that we're failing at making here is that there exists in society a very like toxic understanding of what beauty is for a human being and that toxic understanding of beauty causes us to really kind of like discriminate against people who don't fit in with to that like box when it comes to what our bodies look like or how um how we like dress how we uh interact with the world around us as far as like our like body goes right and that is due to a lot of like underlying fat phobic ideas and so if you have like a lot of really negative belief like real negative beliefs about your body um those negative beliefs oftentimes are maybe not caused but definitely influenced by fat phobic ideals in the same way that you know a lot of people like this was an argument that that I will call back to. God, it's been almost a year already. Um, if you remember, about a year ago, uh, when the discourse over Philosophy Tube's video about gender dysphoria came out, um, something that I kind of touched on back then was that the idea that gender dysphoria is not in any way influenced by uh, transphobic ideas and is like in no way like socially influenced is obviously like 
you can point to that, right? There are social influences that cause a lot of our ideas around our bodies to exist and about like trans bodies specifically. And so dysphoria, I don't believe is caused by these um, social factors in entirety, but it is influenced. Um, and in the same way, um, people's negative feelings about their body, especially if they are um, overweight or if they are, you know, just, you know, built differently that isn't within like the the quote unquote like standard of like what it means to to be like a beautiful person. Um, those are definitely influenced by fat phobic ideals. And that is the argument that they are failing at making. And when I say they are failing at making it, some of you probably are watching this and thinking, how are they failing? That's what they said. Not failing at making this argument. That's what they said. This negative belief about yourself is fat phobic. And that is where we differ here. Um, because let's reread for the third time today this tweet. If you have an eating disorder specifically concerned with being skinny or not being fat, please stop pretending you're not fat phobic. So that's not what this person said. What this person said is that having an eating disorder specifically concerned with being skinny or not being fat is fat phobia. And why that sucks is I don't like punishing people by uh, ascribing ascribing to them the idea of fat phobia to somebody simply for having an eating disorder. Um, I actually really do find this, um, this like, oh, well, I'll get into that. Um, this, the reason I bring this up is because this thinking is kind of pervasive. It's actually why, and this might be a really hot take to say, um, I really don't like the body positivity movement that much as far as like the outward facing uh, side of it. And the reason for that is I have found that so many of them tend to be in one of two camps. Um, they either tend to be the people who uh, think that body positivity is something as simple as just saying that people are beautiful and then they do nothing else. And we don't actually address any of the like pre-existing problems that lead to like fat phobia. Or they end up being like this person and taking the uh, the stance, the unironic stance, that it is fat phobic to have an eating disorder. That like, if you don't want to be fat, you're fat phobic. And I'm sorry, no, just no. I'm not gonna make an argument further from there, just no. It is actually, and this is, this is what I was gonna say a second ago, um, I actually find this, this like belief structure to be kind of inherently ableist in a way. This argument is essentially saying that it is inherently fat phobic to have a mental health condition because an eating disorder is a mental health issue. Eating disorders are not something that you necessarily choose. And again, when we're talking about mental health, it like we get into the weeds here because like there is choice involved in mental health conditions and people do have the ability to make choices that influence their like mental health um, situations, right? That is obviously not something I'm trying to take away from people here. You are not helpless if you have like a mental illness, but you didn't choose it. And you don't just get to flip a switch and it be gone and it go away. And it's not something that you can just choose to get rid of. You have to do a lot of work and not everyone has the resources or the tools or the ability to just get rid of a mental health issue like an eating disorder. And so to say that you are inherently fat phobic because you have an eating disorder is kind of like saying that having gender dysphoria is transphobic. And I don't think that that is a good argument either for the same reasons, because I feel like this ascribes a level of intent to somebody, a level of like malice that can't be proven and that is also unhelpful to give to somebody in a situation like that. When I am feeling dysphoric about my body, it is not because I'm being transphobic. It's because there is a part of my body that I don't want, that, that is in, incongruent with how I, I feel about myself. If you don't want to be trans or transphobic, would never be argued. 
Like I'm obese mildly and most people can't tell by looking at me because I'm like a few pounds into that area and I'm learning to still feel safe and okay with my own body. I, I'm like this because I have BED and binge, which these people typically also equally ignore and attack people for having. Yeah, exactly. But the reason why this like really kind of pissed me off um, and definitely like pissed Therese off, this was like kind of like a, a, a perfect storm um, because I actually had a moment last night due to some like body dysmorphia because I do struggle with like feelings about like that about my body. Um, I don't have an eating disorder, but I do like, I do struggle with a lot of self image issues when it comes to my body because my body is not, and it, this is not just like an, uh, because of like being trans, it's not just a gender dysphoria thing. Um, it's literally like, like I feel a lot of like dysmorphia over parts of my body because like uh, I I lost a lot of weight. Um, I used to be 350 pounds. I am now, um, I believe, 186. Um, and I lost the majority of that weight over like a seven month period. I went from like 350 pounds to like 190 in like six months. And that is a very that is a lot of weight to lose for any like one person and doing it that quickly causes you to like have a lot of um, a lot of just like skin that doesn't go away. Um, so I have pretty like there are things that you can do like you can um, do like some workout to to like workouts to kind of like help with getting that skin to kind of re-elasticize, but it's it's not something you can just get rid of. Um, it typically is something that takes like surgical intervention to, to fix. And so like, I have a lot of like just loose skin all over my body. Like my, my arms, you can't hardly like really see it all that well, but my arms are like very flabby. I've got like very flabby legs. Um, same thing with like my stomach and my pelvic area. And like, there's just a lot of that all around my body. And I get a lot of dysmorphia over that stuff. And the reason for that is obviously there's like social factors there that influence that that like are rooted in fat phobia but i am not like fat phobic because i like cried after putting on a swimsuit those things are not like th those things do not equate yeah my sort of kind of stepmom had a gastric bypass in the past and ended up getting cosmetic surgery because of the skin and so on since she also had dysmorphia yeah like i'm i'm legitimately considering getting um like a tummy tuck and a mons lift for all of it because I've got like a lot of dysmorphia about it. Oh, thank you, Cyclone Dust, for giving Spherical Cat a tier two subscription. That's very kind of you. Not in everyone's case, in any case, which this tweet ignored. Yeah, yeah, no, like that's that that is like the biggest issue that I have with this tweet is that it's very overly broad and it's like painting everyone with such a broad brush. You can't you can't really actually do anything with this. Like this isn't an argument you can really make. And like Starm said in a uh, YouTube chat, somehow shaming myself into getting healthier doesn't work. Yes, there's a reason we separate transphobic people from internalized transphobia. It's not that like there aren't internalized like fat phobic beliefs that we have about ourselves. It's that like this person is literally arguing that the state, the like state of mind of having an eating disorder is fat phobic. And I think that that is actually kind of ableist. Um, because it's not something that you can really control. There are, there are like choices that you can make, but it's not something that you can control. Um, I will, I, I do want to kind of like go through some of the responses here. So like, uh, this person says, and I think they're, yeah. Uh, I mean, while eating disorders are a sign of mental illness and should be treated, there's nothing wrong with personally not wanting to be overweight or wanting to be more fit, especially when you go about it in a more practical way like healthy diet and exercise. And as long as you don't project those standards onto other people unsolicited, if you want to label that as fat phobic, that's fair, I guess, except if you are in fact suffering from an eating disorder. But again, there's nothing wrong with that. This is a correct opinion, by the way. Like there is nothing wrong with not wanting to be overweight or wanting to be more fit. It's something that I have as a goal. Like I want to lose. I'm, I'm the lowest weight that I was at was at, um, 170 and that was where I felt most comfortable that's technically still overweight for the average like woman of my age and like height um but like that's where I felt the most comfortable and so that's where I want to be at and so like I'm 
you know, making the active choice to lose like the 15 or so pounds that I kind of gained back and try to be a little bit more fit and, and have more like healthy diet and exercise relationship because of it. Um, that doesn't make me fat phobic because I want to like lose weight. Um, and this person says, of course, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be more, more fit through healthy habits. That's quite literally the opposite of an eating disorder though. Right. And so this is like the tweet that I, I wanted to kind of look at because this is the one that gives the game away. Um, because again, this is not like making the argument that we were making earlier that like you can have internalized fat phobic beliefs that cause you to have like the, the influence your like perception of self and can influence the way that you like act. This person is literally saying that having an eating disorder is fat phobic. Yes, they do night wild. Like the, the kinds of people that, that are agreeing with this take here. And again, I don't want to single out this specific person. Like this person, like obviously made a bad tweet, but I'm not trying to like harass this one person um, or like single them out. It's like the people that believe this. And apparently there are a lot considering this thing has 1.7 thousand likes. And I mean, I'm sure that a lot of these are quote retweets. I don't know if we can. There's 2,000 retweets. Some portion of those are just straight up retweets and not quote tweets. So a good portion of people are agreeing with this take. They are saying that it is literally fat phobic to have an eating disorder. That's the take. And I think that's bad because it really does go into the, into literally seeing being disabled as like a moral ill. It is the same the same like actual uh argumentation yeah i am feeling saucy uh, i gotta be a little bit like a little bit careful i do follow a lot of sex workers on this account so i do have to be careful um well and cyclone dusk that is uh that is an argument that i would like like levy too is that this this kind of like thinking is also um like also goes down the same path of like I, I, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to say that, like, I, I, I want, I want it to be perfectly clear that when I do say this, I, I know it's coming from a, from a person who is not like, who is not like physically disabled in a lot of ways. Like there are like things that I, I do like suffer from that I have that are, I, I guess would qualify as like disabilities. Um, but I don't tend to like identify with being disabled. Um, generally. And so I will say that this is not coming from like the perspective of somebody who is, um, disabled. Uh, however, um, I am going to kind of like say this, that even uh, I'm going to like take this position here and you can agree with me or not, but, um, if we were in like a perfect society where like structural ableism was something that we actually like gave a shit about and we cared about and we actually like fixed, people are still going to not want to be blind. Like people are still going to want to be able to walk they're like, people are still going to feel like that's something that they don't want. Like, it's not going to like, people are going to not still like feel in their hearts. Like they're not going to desire those like disabilities and that's okay. And it's also okay if like, like if you're blind or if you're in a wheelchair or, ex you know, list of like physical disabilities, it's okay to have those things and be okay with it and be chill and say, you know, this is something that I'm, I'm cool with, but it is still going to be the case in a perfect society that there are going to be disabled people who are going to not want to be disabled, that they're going to desire not being disabled, even in a society that was like perfectly like structured for disabled people. Yeah, some of this could just be that Hunter got me, but I got to be honest with you. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Like if this is somebody just kind of like trolling or whatever, just for the, the sake of like engagement bait, I still think it's worth talking about for this reason, because I do know that there are people who legitimately believe this. Like there are people who legitimately believe this. Yeah, Pose Law. 
Yeah, and it's kind of like gender dysphoria and transphobia. I I don't care. I think that like even in a perfect society where like transphobia is not like a, a systemic thing, people are still going to experience gender dysphoria, guys. It's still going to happen. They're still going to experience those things and they're still going to not want to like, like there are still going to be trans people that are going to cry at night because they're trans. They're still going to like mourn the thing that they don't have. And like, I'm saying that as somebody who doesn't experience that that often. I actually don't like have a lot of like mourning for like not being raised as a girl. But I do think about it sometimes. I do think about like what my life would have been like. And I think that even in a society where being trans was like completely within the, um, within like the realm of like normal accepted things, I would still think that. And I think there would be a lot of trans people who would. Yeah, Annie Gala. The tendency to ascribe disability as a moral failing is fascist conditioning and a lot of leftists have not unlearned this. True. And that's okay, Akira Hanekel. I, I do I do understand that. I I do sometimes like get those feelings. I'm not saying like I'm like that I never have those thoughts. It's just I don't typically do. Um, but I still think that even in like a perfect society, like those thoughts would be normal. They would be expected. And it wouldn't be transphobic to have them. And I, I don't want to like go on this for like super forever. Like, obviously, this is just one tweet and it's a bad one. It's a bad tweet, but I don't want to go on it forever. I, I just kind of wanted to like expand on this because I do think that it's something worth talking about because there are people who like tend to go to like these extremes of literally thinking that it is ableist to have a, like a, an eating disorder. Or, um, I'm sorry, not ableist, fat phobic to have an eating disorder. That is an ableist take. And I honestly, I might take the, the time to talk. Maybe it'll be a different segment. Maybe it won't even be a segment. I don't know. Uh, talk a little bit about like semi-related to this. Um, like actual like fat phobia and like a, 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 an example of this like in real life that kind of uh, goes along with what this tweet is trying and failing to to get at. Um, but we'll, we'll do that in a different segment because I think I've been talking about this for way too long. Um, so anyway, that's all I got. Um, I will see you in another video. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you can become a channel member by clicking the join button, leave a super chat or a super thanks. You can become a patron at patreon.com slash sagealexis, or you could donate to my coffee. The link for that will be in the description below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.